find references to percent everywhere. 80 million tons of Jar Jar merchandise, now 70% off. AT&T is giving us a bargain. USA Savings offers 40% off during the holidays. How about this one? Dell lops up to 20% off notebook prices. Here's a good one from California. The 20% solution. If you use 20% less electricity, they'll take 20% off of what you pay for electricity. Pretty good. Uses percent. And my very favorite, put 68% better instantly. The point is that everywhere you look, we use percents. It's very common, and most of you probably already have a feeling for what percent means. It means some part of something. For example, here are things, I'm not even sure these statistics are correct, I just made them up. 55% um, of all truck owners have Fords, who knows? 75% of the pie was eaten. A Canadian dollar is worth 83% of an American dollar, and you also talk about bank interest in terms of percent. We're going to use this class to investigate exactly what percent means and then look at some basic operations using percents. Let's take a look what percent means. Per means for each, and then cent comes from the Latin for 100, and a percent means for each 100. Let's get a little bit more mathematical about it. N percent is defined as the ratio of N to 100. So if I have 25 percent, I have the ma what mathematically means 25 pieces out of 100 pieces. 75 percent, 75 pieces out of 100 pieces. Let's see how we can use that. First we'll look at percents as fractions, since you see if we put n over 100, we can talk about fractions. Well, let's start with 50% off. What does that 50% mean? It means I have 50 pieces of whatever out of 100. Notice that 50 one hundredths is a fraction. And in fact, I can reduce this fraction to lowest terms by basically first dividing by 10 to give me 5 tenths. Then I notice if I divide by 5, the numerator and denominator, I find that 50% is equivalent to the fraction 1 half. If you see 50% off, and we're going to look at these discounts in um, quite a bit of detail in one of the later units, if you look at 50% off, what you're talking about is half price. Let's play with these numbers in order to get some sort of a feel for how this may work. Let's look at 25% and try to express 25% as a fraction reduced to lowest terms. And we'll start with the definition. P percent, whatever P is, is P per hundred and written as P over 100. 25 percent is 25 per 100, written as 25 one hundredths. And again, you can see that that means if I have 25 percent of something, that means out of every 100 things I have, I have 25 of them. Out of whatever 100 things there are, I have 25 of them. 25 percent, 25 per 100. Now I've expressed 25 percent as a fraction, 25 one hundredths. I can factor the numerator and denominator into 25 times 1 over 25 times 4. The 25's cancel out, and it reduced to lowest terms, I find that 25% is equivalent to the fraction 1 fourth. Let's look at another one 
that might be a little bit more complex, 33 and a third percent. This is something you see relatively commonly, and the third might be a little bit annoying. But if we follow the rules and then follow the rules of mathematics, we can figure out what that is as a fraction. We follow the rule by first when we see a fraction and we want to change it to a percent, put the value of the percent into the numerator of the fraction, which I've done here. Often, though, we don't like to have something like 33 and a third over 100. It's a little messy. We'd like a pure fraction with one whole number in the numerator and another whole number in the denominator. We have to go a few more steps now to be able to solve this. The first thing I'm going to do is express that 33 and one third as an improper fraction. Remember how to do that. You multiply the 33 by the denominator of the one third. 33 times 3 is 99. And then you add the 1 on top of the one third. 33 and a third expressed as an improper fraction is 100 thirds, as you see here. What I have now is 100 thirds over 100. What does that actually mean? Remember that 100 thirds, when you see something in fractional form like that, what you're really saying is you have 100 thirds divided by 100, which can be written as 100 over 1 to write everything in fractional form. We have this so far. Let's remember that when you do a division of fractions, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. If I'm dividing by 100 over 1, I multiply that by 1 over 100 to get the equivalent quantity. I notice something else here right away. That's I have 100 in a numerator times a 100 in a denominator. Those cancel out, and I'm left with a simple 1 third. So now, if you see 33 and a third percent off, that means that they're taking one third of the price off of whatever you're paying for. The equivalent of 33 and one third percent as a fraction is one third. Let's look at another one. How about 200 percent? It's often difficult to think of numbers bigger than 100 percent, but mathematically, and occasionally you'll see you have 200 percent of something. Let's see what that really means if we express it as a fraction. I do, I just follow the definition. I have 200 percent is equivalent to 200 over 100. I can cancel out. I see I have a factor of 100 in the numerator. And I certainly have a factor of 100 in the denominator. And it's often common, as I'm doing here, if you have a certain number of zeros in the numerator and denominator of fractions, you can take a little shortcut and realize what that means is 2 times 100 over 1 times 100 and just cancel out the double zeros, leaving me with 2 over 1 which is equivalent to 2. 200 percent is equivalent to 2. If I have 200 percent of something, for example, what's 200 percent of a cow? That's two cows. Uh, you might remember that. Uh, so you can have percentages that are greater than uh, 100 percent, more than the whole thing. 200 percent means you have double what you had before. Let's look at another one of these that is more fun, if you'll pardon that expression. <laughs> when math teachers say something is fun, uh, you have to always worry because they mean something pretty incredible. What about 150 and 3 quarters percent? How would we express that as a fraction? And the answer is by following the rules. Let's remember the basic definition. We take that 150 and 3 quarters and put it 
over 100. I've taken a step here. I expressed the 150 and 3 quarters again as an improper fraction because I want to work with fractions. Remember again how we do this. 150 times 4 is 600. Then I add the 3. So 150 and 3 quarters expressed as an improper fraction is 603, a nice round even number, <laughs> divided by 4. And that whole business is divided by 100. As we did before, we remember that 603 fourths over 100 is the same as saying you have 603 fourths divided by the fraction 100 over 1. Let's now look at that. So if I have 603 fourths divided by 100 over 1, that's equivalent to 603 fourths multiplied by the reciprocal 1 over 100. When I do that, I change the 150 and 3 quarters percent to the improper fraction 603 four hundredths. Since that is an improper fraction, what I would like to do is change this to a mixed number by dividing the 603 by 400. What I get is um, 1 and 203 four hundredths. You might notice now that 203 four hundredths is going to be awfully close to 200 four hundredths. 200 four hundredths is about a half. What I can say is that 1 203 four hundredths is awfully close to 1 and a half. Now, if I have 100, 150 and 3 quarters percent of a cow, what am I talking about? Well, it would be a cow and a half, and maybe we could call that extra three quarters percent the tail of the cow. Let's look at a quick use for these fractions, and this is based on a true story. <laughs> I bought a pizza which was cut into five slices and was getting set to eat it when my wife came in and begged for some of it. So what I told her is that, okay, being a math person, you can have 40% of it. So uh, if we reduce this to a problem the same way we've done these other problems, I have a pizza cut into five slices, and I told my wife she could have 40%, and the question is, how many slices, how much of that pizza did I agree to give away? Here's the summary of the information. The pizza's cut into fifths. I want to know how many slices 40% of that pizza is. What I need to do is express that 40% as a fraction and then 40% of five slices. 40% is written as 40 one hundredths. I can then reduce that to lowest terms by noting that, first of all, I, ha I can express 40 as 4 times 10, and 100 is 10 times 10. 10 over 10 goes away. I can easily change the 40% to 4 tenths, which I can then factor a 2 out of the numerator and denominator and get 2 fifths. This should be pretty straightforward at this point. If the pizza is cut into five slices, two-fifths of five slices, two pieces out of five, I've agreed to give my wife two slices. Boy, am I being generous when it comes to pizza. Two slices of the five. Oh, gee, that's almost half. Let's now look at percents as decimals and changing percents to decimals. This is reasonably straightforward. Why? Remember that when you change something to a decimal, you change it to some number over a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000, some power of 10. Percents are automatically defined as something over 100. What, uh, how many hundredths do you have? You automatically then 
can change it to a decimal. For example, if you see 82%, that is immediately translated as 82 over 100, and we've learned to identify that 82 hundredths as a decimal as 0.82. Similarly, what's 2%? 2% we immediately write by the definition as 2 one hundredths, and you know now from having practiced with decimals, you can write that as 0 0.02. If I have 157%, I can write that as 157 one hundredths, in which case I have an improper fraction, which I can then change to 1 and 57 one hundredths, and the 57 one hundredths I can write as 0.57. So 157% can be written as a decimal as 1.57. You see that it's possible to do these simply by inspection. Let's look at something that may be a little more complex and look at going from the percent to a fraction to a decimal. What about 33.3 percent? How would we work on this? We would first use the definition and write that as 33.3 over 100. Then, I don't like point threes in fractions. How can I get rid of that point three? Not hard. I can multiply the point three, uh, 33.3 by 10 to get 333, but if I do that to the numerator, I have to do it to the denominator, and I get that 33.3 percent is equivalent to 333 one thousandths. But I know from my previous classes in pre-algebra how to express that as a decimal, 333 thousandths is written as 0.333. So the equivalent of 33.3 percent as a decimal is 0.333 or 333 thousandths. Let's look at what amounts to a quickie way of doing this. Let's examine what's happening here. Take a look at that 82 percent and look at the point A2. What does that suggest to you that you need to do with a decimal place going from a percent to a fraction? If I write 82 percent, then I write down the 82 and put a couple of zeros in there. I move the decimal point to the left once, to the left twice, and I get 0.82. What you need to do is just move the, if you have a percent, to change it to a decimal, you just need to start where the decimal point is on the percent and move it two places to the left. Very simple formula. Let's change 3.1 percent to a decimal. When we do this, I put 3.1 over 100, and again, I get point zero three one thousandths, thirty one thousandths is written that way. Let's use my method for moving the decimal points. We'll move the decimal point one place, two places, and right away I can see that three point one percent can be written as point zero three one as a decimal. How about 0.03 percent as a decimal? I do the same thing. I put the 0.03 there, put in some more zeros, move the decimal point one place, two places, and I see that 0.03 percent is 0 0.0003 written as a decimal. At this point, you see we've gone from a percent to a decimal. Now we're just going to reverse the procedure and go from a decimal to a percent. We're going to express decimals as percents. And you can see right away what happens. In one case, we move the decimal point two places to the left. In this case, it looks like we move the decimal point one place, two places to the right. 
0.82 is equivalent to 82%. Let's look at some other examples that may be a little bit more interesting. How about 0.025? How do we express that as a percent? We write it, move the decimal point one place, move the decimal point two places, and we're done. 0 0.025 is equivalent to 2.5 percent. Here's one that's even more interesting, and what are we going to do here? How about 0 0.0007 as a percent? We rewrite it, leaving a little bit of extra space, move the decimal point one place, move the decimal point two places, 0 0.0007 is equivalent to 0 0.07 percent. How would we express 19.65, and that is a decimal, it has the 0.65 in it, as a percent? We would do the same thing we did in all of the other cases. We would move the decimal point two places to the right. Then I can express 19.65 as 1,965 percent. To go from a decimal to a percent, you move the decimal point two places to the right. To go from a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal point two places to the left. How about a quick quiz? Let's see if you can change these numbers from decimals to percents in your head. What about 0.32? 32 percent. Point three two five one, a little bit more interesting. That's 32.51 percent. Point oh three. Three percent. Remember, if we move the decimal point two places to the right, we have three point. Point oh three is equivalent to three percent. What about the decimal 3.25? 325%. There's one conversion we haven't covered yet, and that is expressing fractions as a percent. We've gone from percent to fractions because the definition made that simple. To go from a fraction to a percent is a little bit more involved. We need to go from a fraction to a decimal, which we've already seen how to do. Then once we have the fraction expressed as a decimal, we change that decimal to a percent. Let's start with the fraction 3 quarters. And remember, how do we change the fraction to a decimal? We remember that 3 quarters is equivalent to the mathematical statement 3 divided by 4. I do the division, and I find when I do, 3 quarters is equivalent to the decimal 0.75. Then I change the 0.75 to a percent, and I find out that 3 quarters is equivalent to 75 percent. Let's look at yet another example, and this one is a tiny bit more involved because of a certain thing that happens when you go from some fractions to decimals. Remember that if we have the fraction two-thirds, we're talking about two divided by three. When we perform this division, we find we get 0.66666666666. It's one of those decimals that goes on forever when you do a fractional conversion. We can write that as 0.666 or 0.6 bar if we want to. Remember now, we want to move the decimal point to get to, uh, from a decimal to a percent two places to the right. When I do that, I can express two-thirds as a fraction as the percent 66.66666 percent, or to round it to the nearest tenth, I can express that as 66.7 percent. Let's do one more. 
what about the fraction, in this case the mixed number, 6 and 3 eighths as a percent? First I change it to an improper fraction multiplying 6 times 8 and adding 3. Then I do that division that's indicated, 51 eighths is 51 divided by 8. That gives me the decimal 6.375 when I do the division. Then to go from 6.375 to a percent, I count two places to the right as I move the decimal, and I can express 6.375, 6 and 3 eighths, as 637.5 percent. <laughs>